I'm Jens Groth, and I'm a principal researcher at Definity. Now, the cryptography we develop is not something that the end user sees. Uh, the end user just interacts with canisters that are running on the internet computer, and the canisters provide a very easy to use interface to the user, so you can build really advanced systems. If you scratch the surface just a little bit on the internet computer, you will see some digital signatures. And that's because the internet computer certifies and authenticates all its outputs. Digital signatures are the bread and butter of uh, cryptography. Uh, it's been with us since the late 70s when the seminal papers of Diffie Hellman and RSA. But uh, on the internet computer, these canvases, they are hosted on subnets. And these subnets, they are run by a set of nodes across the world. So we need signatures that can be run in a distributed way. And fortunately, there's a solution for that called threshold signatures. The nodes will share a secret signing key. They will each have a small part of the secret signing key. Jointly, they can collaborate to create a signature on behalf of a subnet and authenticate the outputs from the internet computer. At the same time, the set of nodes that are running a subnet, it's going to change over time. Maybe a node crashes, uh, maybe a new data center comes on boards and wants to bring in new nodes. That creates a problem, right? Because now I'm going to change the public key every time that we change the set of nodes, create a new sharing. That would lead to a lot of pain in terms of key management. We would have to generate new keys. We would have to uh, uh, distribute those new keys, uh, register them with whoever needs to authenticate information from uh, the internet computer. And it would be really nice if instead we could just have one single permanent and stable uh, public key for the subnet. And that's what I'm going to talk about, how we do that. So there are already protocols that one could use for that, uh, key redistribution protocols that allow you to take a set of nodes having a shares of the secret key and, and being able to bring on board new nodes and, and giving the power to sign to a new incoming set of signers. However, when you run these protocols in general, they are interactive. So the message is going back and forth between uh, the old signers and the new incoming signers. And that is a little problematic when you're running these distributed asynchronous protocols that we are at Definity. So what happens if a message is missing? Is it because it's delayed? Is it because the node has crashed? Is it because the node has been compromised? So what we have developed is a new non-interactive uh, protocol to do uh, key generation and to do redistribution of uh, shares of a secret key. A subnet is always known by one unique public key, and we don't have any key management problems with respect to the public key. Inside the protocol, um, we use plenty of advanced cryptography. Uh, encryption with forward secrecy, uh, non-interactive zero-knowledge proofs, and so forth. So to start with, uh, the internet computer may decide that there's a need for a new subnet, right? And then you have to generate a key for that subnet and shares for the incoming nodes that are supposed to run that subnet. And because it's non-interactive, the internet computer can just generate that, and then there's no interaction with the nodes that are going to run the subnet. At the end of the day, they just need to get a message, um, a ciphertext that contains the secret share of the signing key, and then they're ready to go. Later on, if we want to change the set of nodes that are running the subnet, then again, we can use our key redistribution protocol. And again, the old signers, it's non-interactive. They just create some messages for the incoming signers and the incoming signers pick up those messages and they're ready to go and run, continue running the subnet. There are lots of other things we can do with this uh, new protocols we have. Um, so you might imagine changing the threshold depending on what is the threat level in the world today. You might also imagine uh, having a backup of the uh, signing key. So you create a, a secure backup of the signing key such that if a subnet stalls, then you have a way to kind of restart it. So one of the things that we expect perhaps to do the most is that the nodes running a subnet, they share 
uh, reshare the secret key to themselves. At first, that might sound counterintuitive. Why would you redistribute the key to the nodes who already have the secret key and are already able to sign on behalf of a subnet. But it's a neat trick in, known as uh, proactive security. To explain what proactive security is about, let's think about a subnet that's running for a long time with the same set of nodes. Now, over time, the attacker may uh, accumulate an advantage and try to kind of get more and more information about the uh, secret sharing of this threshold uh, signing key that the subnet has. So it might at some point learn one of the shares from one of the nodes, maybe bribed whoever was running that node. Uh, then maybe later on there's a bug in another node uh, set up and then the attacker learns that share. And as the attacker accumulates shares over time, it might suddenly exceed the threshold and be able to sign messages on behalf of the subnet. And of course, we do not want that. We want the internet computer to be able to run for years without compromise. So in proactive security, the idea is that you keep on refreshing the secret sharing you have. So first, uh, you have a sharing, then after a while you refresh it and generate a new sharing, and then you delete the old sharing. So if an attacker compromises a node at this point, it can learn what is the new share, but it cannot learn anymore what is the old share. So you keep on refreshing the sharings you have of the secret key, and you keep on deleting sharings when you're not using them anymore. And in that way, the attacker only has small time windows in which it can accumulate enough shares to start signing. Uh, and if it doesn't get all of the shares it needs in a particular si time window, then the attacker is out of luck. It's been really great to work with people at Definity uh, on the non-interactive distributed key generation protocol. And we are very much looking forward to seeing it uh, in the internet computer.